This week on RSBNB Update, new Zamorak God Armor arrives with increases to bond prices. This raises eyebrows as people look to the week's Treasure Hunter promo and Soul Die returns. We break down these issues and share our thoughts on what RuneScape 3 needs in an executive producer. This is RSBNB Update, episode 991. Recorded Thursday, June 20th, 2024. Smell my money. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of RSBNB Update. This week, we have some interesting news when it comes to bond prices runescape's executive producer and of course what what everybody what everybody is lining up here to to hear about right tanis the new raising rituals treasure hunter promo that's why we're all here this week right uh i hope not <laughs> i mean we're gonna have a fun discussion about at least one of those or maybe two of those three things but um uh in order to help us do that earth is here uh at the podcast, welcome back, Earth. It's been a, been a while. Howdy doodly. I think we last had you on. It? Yeah, I think no. Oh, we last had you on for the financial episode, right? right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You just bring me on when you want to talk money. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I think we need to talk about the bond price increase, amongst other things, and and we'll get to that. No, in... the the treasure pro- or treasure hunter promo sounds really exciting. You can hear the pin drop there, folks. Yes, but <laughs> <laughs> in any case, I want to give a big thank you to our experienced tier Patreon supporters for enabling us to do what we do here at Update. Without them, the podcast would be truly impossible this week. That's Amos Reed, Andrew C., Drama Free, Jason S., Jesse W., Kesky, Ricky A., Ripeth, Runestar, and the Naked Captain. You'll hear more about our Patreon offerings a little bit later on the podcast, but in the meantime, if you want to follow along, update.show for show notes we also have the friends chat which is bits bytes in game and the discord at update.show slash discord i can be found in game at shane12088 tannis can be found at tannis79 and earth is at lord earth a week when i actually had to say rsns and it's not just the person's name i like that i like that um i want to start with some happy news i want to start with some happy news this week they put into game the Zamorak armor uh, retro overrides and the and the remastered versions of them this week. So if you back in the day used to run around in the old school looking Zamorak armor from uh, the Clue Scrolls, you can now pick that up in the Rune Coin store for a package deal of six hundred thirty Rune Coins or five hundred sixty seven uh, for members. Are you guys gonna are you gonna pick either of these up? Or pick this up? I guess it's just one. Negative. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm not really. Yeah, it's, it's not really my. Into my... the Zamorak. Yeah. Yeah. I picked up the Ceridoman one. Have, I have my dig on high robe. That's my luck. That's iconic. That's iconic. And, you know, when the Ceridoman yep, ones. Yes, I am. <laughs> this is when the Ceridoman ones came out. I picked up that one. But one thing I do want to mention for this with the Zamorak one and the Ceridoman one is that the when they first came out, the kite shields weren't actually included. So the kite shields actually now exist and that uh, you could you get the kite shield with the package. And I do have to say that the kite shields Changing history. do look absolutely wonderful here. So um, I think the next one I'll probably pick up when if they continue doing these and, you know, by all means, I hope they do. Um, is is the Guthix one because green? Obviously, I don't I don't think I'd ever wear uh, the Samarak one, but uh, the Ceridoman one was uh, the the classic case of being something back when they first came out that I always wanted, but I never had the funds to afford. So now I can wear it. Now I can wear it freely as an override. So uh, now you're all about that green, right? Shane? Yeah, yeah, and like like that is the way things you know trended initially with that i'm surprised i didn't go for the uh gothics one on that but um this is in game now looks absolutely great and i i know these things are always popular with the community 
So I say, as I said with the last ones on these, if you like these and you want to see more of them, you got to buy it so Jagex knows to make more of these. But um, hoping we get the, the Gothics ones eventually. Okay. So let's just, uh, let's just meander on then through the episode because, you know, we, we look at everything else that's, that's here this week. And alongside this, you're going to need a bond. To buy the rune coins, right? To buy that. Around chain. Yeah. That feels like we'd be lost. I mean, if you do go up the, the river that, you know, meanders and you get lost, then, you know... You're well, if you go to... up that river, you're up a shit's creek, and I feel like that's where we're going with this next topic. But it's only Uh-oh. a dollar! <laughs> dollar? Uh, no, this aggression will not stand, man. No What's up more. with this? So... Framing wise, United States seven ninety nine to eight ninety nine, Canada eight ninety nine to nine ninety nine for the for the bond pricing, UK four ninety nine to five ninety nine with this. And I see this as as a move that is in tune with, you know, what we what we would normally have um when it looks at just, you know, inflation and how things have increased over the last, you know, three, four years, so to speak on that. And Earth, you can correct me if I'm wrong on this. According to some of the uh, market values as it's showing right now, emphasis on right now and the amount of time the GE takes to update on these things, it's looking like right now, emphasis on right now, a few days after, and a few days before this goes into action, we haven't seen much movement on this yet, but right now the price is, if you wanted to buy a million coins, it's six cents per million coins with the bond. I, I don't think you're approaching this the right way. How would you approach the it? The price of the bond has increased. I, I looked at both RS3 and old school, and... <laughs> As far as I can tell, I mean, they're different economies, but it looks like a 10 to 1 sort of ratio yeah, of value. for the gold there yeah. because the um, price has increased from about 30 million on RS or 130 million on RS3 to 141. Keep in mind the price change hasn't come into effect yet, so it's probably going to go up some more. Um, and then on old school, it's gone from it's gone up about one mil from thirteen point five or two thirteen point five from about twelve point five, but it was already going up <laughs> before the announcement. Um, but it's it's about six point three five cents now per million GP, and it's. It was 6.15 cents. So the market is healing. It's okay. about the same, but we'll uh, we need to come back in a couple weeks and see where and, it's and, at and there. see where and see where it lands because you know real world value you're looking at about a 12 percent increase in the in the price from 7.99 to 8.99 US. But I mean it makes sense. And if you extrapolate and that price that... increase is probably because, and at least partially because people are going to be buying them right now, reducing the supply. Yeah, you know, just waiting for so that they did, so they can uh, stock up on the low price them. and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, fair, fair on that. Um, and. Do you think then with that that we could, you know, look at this outwards and say, you know, expect maybe a 12%, another 12% increase on the price of bonds in game based off of, you know, where we were at at the announcement to where things eventually settle? Do we settle on that as kind of like the um, the guesstimate of where things are going to go if we come back in, you know, a month or so on this? And Hard to tell. It may balance out now with people buying them up, but then them being higher in price, so fewer will be purchased. But that's not well, how this works, though. I mean, when you're purchasing them, there's an endless supply. 
that only counts when you're talking GE supply demand pricing. Yeah, but if you're selling them, I mean, nobody's dumping infinite United States dollars into Jagex, right? There's nothing of value so that you would want to do that. There's a finite supply of bonds. Yeah. Even though they can produce as many as they want, right. they're only... Like, let me just ask you this. What item in game do we see ever see a rush on bonds for? Like, what no, causes I mean, people to buy the bonds? Premier. Like, that used to be the thing. Um, when RuneFest, you could use bonds. There used to be a rush on that. And other than that, it's the occasional promo. Ironically enough, maybe you might see an uptick. Maybe with maybe the armor this week, right? <laughs> Well, not that, but yeah. Oh, I still think it's incredibly stupid to to buy bonds and redeem the treasure hunter keys. If you want, yeah. I if do. you want treasure hunter keys, you know, you spend the real money on them for the proper value. I mean, unless unless it was GP to begin with, right? I'm right, sure. or if, or if that's your only option. But then even with that, you kind of you know kind of I I do wonder what you're doing with that. So. Here, my my problem with this is okay. It sounds reasonable. Everything's going up, but that is my problem. I've I like everyone else have freaking inflation fatigue, and at some point, if you don't stop purchasing the product, it will not end. This isn't driven because what are we are are they going to pay the J mods more? Hey, you know what? If you're giving your J mods another dollar an hour shit raise my raise my rent whatever that ain't gonna happen but so, it's just a general um, increase in the entire economy from everything of you know like the the food supplies at the office to maintenance on the computers the net connections greed. the 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 lighting everything like that it comes down to greed because you have to have endless unchanging growth and at some point this is my point where I say, nope, I'm not spending nine bucks on fake money. This is my point. Like I'm not, I, I'm not gonna do it because when I do it, I'm not buying one. Down. I'm buying ten. I'm buying twenty. I'm buying. And that's why the whatever. supply will go down, and the and they'll become more expensive if if people feel the way you do on that. Yeah, but some people, okay, that doesn't mean I'm coming back. I never said that you said that you would, but. I, the thing th that I wanted to separate here, I want to separate the fundamental question of real world inflation from the from the game's economy. And I think the thing that we just need to take a step back from this and ask is that is this price increase of a dollar or thereabouts or, you know, 12 percent ish, give or take, going to have an have an influence on the game's economy with this? And based off of that, you can then extrapolate that out and say, you know, well, maybe this is a good thing Jagex is doing. Maybe it's a bad thing that Jagex is doing at the end of the day. And based on the, the moves we're seeing in the market right now, I don't necessarily know that people are going to be priced out of buying bonds if they need an extra infusion of GP. Because you were kind of getting to this in, in our in our pre-discussions on this, Tannis. We talk about, of course, the rune coins. We talk about things like bank boosters and the preset slots and um some people who might even buy the by the by the treasure hunter keys or even, you know, the the bulk load of Premier. But the biggest thing I think that bonds were very successful at when they came out was reducing the game's reliance and re the reliance of people on third-party illicit GP traders. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then the question and... with that is, does that get harmed by this? And if it doesn't, well, we... then that's great. If it does, yeah, well, then maybe we're heading a bad direction on this, and you have at the very, at the very base level an interesting case study about about real world inflation affecting affecting a video game in a negative way in its own economy but, it, but it's how inflation how what effect it could have on a black market right like 
Um, because even even if I okay, even if I bought into the argument that every company has decided to make thing has nothing to do with that they want to make more money. Let me say that I I, I said okay, even if that was the case, then in, in this regard, it doesn't that that's like in my favor. What's in your favor? Because if you're if you're saying like like if I believed th that you know it's just going up because everything just has to go up. Well, guess who guess who doesn't have to go up? Oh, your gold sellers they're not affected by it, right? I mean, they're not affected by any of that. But they could also just it's a black they market. Could, they they're could also just see that they need to you know increase their cut with that and as a result increase their prices too and it's not because people but are that's arbitrarily not how it works. but people don't arbitrarily choose to increase things because they want yes, to make more they money do. it's because they're we're seeing since since the since the bad p word an increase of money into all of our westernized economies they're seeing if they when can get away with can it you if help people me pay here? more when were the last increase in bond price and when was the last increase in membership the last bond price increase was 2018 so that's been five years yeah and i th want to say the last membership increase price was probably last year okay so a year or two hold on let me because Okay, when, May 2022 okay. was the last increase, and that went from that was a dollar fifty a month increase. Yeah, and and I think that was what that was the one from uh, 2018 was the time before that. Yeah, and that was a that was a long time one, and I remember discussing that one on the show too when when that happened. And and I, mean, for, I think a dollar increase after over five six years, years is especially not, when you factor in everything else in the economy. Yeah, it's it's not the end of the world. We had a global pandemic that printed tons of money into the world market. and yada yada like, yeah. I don't I don't really feel like a dollar increase at this point is unreasonable. I'm shocked it hasn't happened but, already. Well, sure, we can be shocked, but why? Why? Why does? It See, here's the thing. People make it out like it's inedible. It just has to happen. It doesn't. No, we don't want inflation to happen. to happen. Inflation sweet spot is about 1% to 2% a year. Yeah, I mean, hey, at the end of the day, at least it's bonds. I mean, that's for me, that's silver lining. If we right? do that. I don't have to participate with bonds if I don't want to. It's like if, if Treasure Hunter went up, I don't give a shit. Um, you know, subscriptions a little bit more, but you, at some point we have to stop buying shit just because a company wants to make more money. They're but they're going to. They're I don't going think to that's what it's about. To. A twelve percent increase in price over so eight been five, over set five years. years. So that's pretty close to your one to two percent. Yeah, annualized. But Tanis, you're you are you are the market. You are the person who's not going to buy them now because they've increased the price. That's why the supply is going to go down. So, and and if the I mean, supply this, goes this down, is how the market works. That's better for everybody else because that nine dollars, or sorry, not nine dollars, seven dollars, gets you more. Nine dollars. It's nine dollars. It's going up to nine bucks. I know your beaver bucks ain't more than our. American dollar. Oh, sorry, you, ten Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and see, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's a threshold, right? Everyone has a threshold. Yeah. Uh, at one point, and it might sound stupid as shit, but once you're one penny over that threshold, no, it's not worth it anymore. It's just, it's not worth it. I don't, I don't want it for that. What if you say that? And penny when you elsewhere? think about, but when you, when you think about it too, it's the Here's some fun math. Do some math on how much one of these, you know, T95 or best in slot weapons actually <laughs> is going to cost somebody. Let me do that right now for you. It, Which one? Pick it, it, one. What, Pick one. Uh, the, the, the bow, right? Or is okay, that the good bow one? of uh, the last Guardian 
price. We'll use ELY.gg on this because they probably have a more recent price on this. Um, let's just say 2.7 bill. 2.7 billion GP. And so that's over $200. Yeah. Ooh, that's a stow ship right there. But actually, that's a really good stow ship, right? Like, you could have. You can have things like mine that they just look cool. They actually That's actually more than more than the Star Trek online premium ships, but so Okay, walk me through that. So two point seven and you factor in the let's just say hundred and forty mil on that. So what are we getting to with this, Tannis? Well, I'm just saying it's that's why it's not worth it to me at this point. All right, like not that I would have ever bought something like that anyway, but for me, I I just it's it's too much. It's just and and I the price will continue to go up if if people continue to buy it, right? And that I mean, so the only way to stop it, stop buying. People them. keep buying more of them, the price would go down, but. The supply would I just be don't see how that works with a digital good like that. I I don't I don't really. Well, you still want them, right? Get it. Like, I mean, I know many people are not going to do this, but you'd be looking at nineteen bonds, nineteen thereabouts, to buy that bow of the last guardian. Yeah. And you know that's up to you if you wanted to do that if you wanted to. If you wanted to spend, you know, 170, 180 US dollars on that, go for it, in my view. But I think there's, you know, better, more efficient ways to get that in the game so, because you really only need that at the ultimate high levels of PVM right now. Then, okay. So I guess at the end of the day, what we should all be agreed on is the connection of the purpose of bonds being there as a guardrail of gold sellers right i think that's the most important thing yes so mm -hmm. what if oh my god now now my commie friends are gonna hate me but um break free of your mental prisons <laughs> and do what, no, well, makes what i'm sense. saying is or if it's chains, all about if it's all about workers of the world <laughs> unite if it's all about the relationship with what someone is willing to pay and do it legit for versus what you can get, you know, from gold sellers, then there's like a, there's an amount there that you can, as one, you, you know what I mean? If, if you figure out what that relationship is, then as the market would go up, then the bond price would go up. If the market went down, then the bond price should go down. But I'm not talking like GP. I'm saying if it's in GP, like tie the GP to its actual value then. You know, like if everyone's in, if there, if it really is in such high oh, demand. Oh, so you're saying if you get, you have one bond, you're guaranteed to get a certain amount of GP from it. No, I'm actually like saying the opposite. selling it, you... I'm saying that if if the the amount of GP that you get out of a bond when you go and sell a bond in game, that ratio would be tied to how much in real dollars that bond costs. If one goes up, the other goes up. If one the other goes down, the other one goes down. It's actually dy like dynamic pricing, right? Well, it is dynamic. You yeah. can't have both, right? I mean, unless you start splitting Doesn't it the already bonds do that? up. Yeah, that's Not what the market really, price it does, is. It, never down. it doesn't do it with United <laughs> States dollars, but it does it with in-game gold. Yeah, but they're raising the price in United States dollars. And the market is adjusting to be priced higher in-game. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess that's the yin and the yang, right? If you... If you're focused on what it's going to do over on the game side, I, I guess I'm. 
I just don't want to pay that on the real side. Well, nobody's asking you to. And I, I yeah, think right. no, and I, I think the thing that sells this to me, because coming into this, I was kind of on the fence about where this lands, is the is the numbers here that Earth cooked up where you said it's close to that you know Looked that up i did not commit fraud <laughs> he's, you, you, he's not in new york <laughs> you came up with the one to two percent a year <laughs> given the that bonds have an increase since 2018 you said one you to cooked two the percent, book there, and i just did the vision yeah and, oh, and hell, so, you heard it here first. so so i was right on the one to two percent a year <sighs> to get to that point you yeah were. he verified okay. that a while back Shane, yeah Okay. Now you're trying to say that I'm committing fraud. <laughs> no, I'm a big fan of. I'm a big fan of fraud. Uh, no, I'm a right, big. But, fa- but look at this. Like, <laughs> you feel it. Like, when I buy bonds, I'm buying ten, right? So I'm. I feel a hundred dollars more than I feel eighty. No matter how you look at it, I just that. Oh, that it's only going different. up. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Um, the the, the bond price in the U.S. Is 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 going to be eight ninety nine, so nine dollars up from eight. Nine dollars, right? Okay, yeah. So nine, um, it's the Canadian no. price that's going up to nine ninety nine from eight ninety nine. No, Sorry for confusing. The monopoly there. money. Yeah, yeah the the monopoly money that apparently smells like maple syrup if you smell it, but. <laughs> What? Oh, I know that. Yeah, there's a stereotype out there that the new uh, Canadian polymer bills smell like maple syrup, but they don't. And do you often smell you the should never bills smell, when you get um, them? No. Bills that are in no. currency? No, I don't. You're, you're more likely to have ash. Especially not like right. the ones. We don't have a dollar bill here. Yeah, uh, exactly. You don't right. have them. <laughs> Just a bin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we have the loonies instead of the dollar bills. Shane, you can't call them that anymore. That's legitimately yeah. what we call them. That's, that's God, not very PC. Uh, I'll bring some specimens next time I come visit. Oh, gee, you just keep making. Uh, it work. Anyways, to clarify, I don't on want this. any specimens of your one dollar bills and where they've been. U.S. pricing mm. is seven ninety nine per bond. On the twenty fifth of June, this will be going up to eight ninety nine U.S. and that's the difference there. One dollar, one dollar, Tannis, one dollar difference. So eighty dollars versus ninety if you were buying ten. And when did you last need ten bonds? Dare I ask? Oh, I mean that's just when when I buy bonds. I I usually buy ten. Okay, fair enough. Um, I mean it's probably been. It's probably been a while, maybe the beginning of the year. I usually do it a couple times a year, so I have walking around money. Okay, interesting. You know, I've actually never bought a bond in game that I used for money in game. I always used it for its other services that it provided. Yeah, well, the services I need uh, is money. Because, okay. Yeah, I can't. All right. I mean, I can't kill shit, so you know. Do do your farm runs. Do your herbs. Go go get the yak milk and go get the dinosaur roars and do yak what the yak milk and get a uh, daily potion flask and you'll be raking the money in. All I gotta do is milk some yaks. You're saying yeah, and get dinosaur roars and potion flasks, the regular ones. That hmm. those are my three daily things I do in game if i can't do anything else yak milk dinosaur roars potion flasks you can give it a try yeah in any case we're we're moving off the beaten track here um with the bond pricing and i and i feel like we we didn't we went more into the economics of this than most people would have in the in the community let us know you guys if you think if you think we missed something on this and you know generally um, I feel okay with this now, you know, looking at it that the at the one to two percent a year um annualized growth on that because you know you look at other things in real life and say, Whoa, if that would have stayed to one to two percent a year, I'd be much happier at the end of the day on that. Yes. But no, you're a hundred percent right about that. But I think it's real life that's that just makes me be like Right. And everybody has their thing. own everybody has their own <laughs> unique financial situations that they need to plan for. 
and work around and, and take into account on that. And, you know, from that entire perspective, asking somebody to spend, you know, $9 on a supplementary thing for a video game versus eight might be, might be the breaking point at the end of the day. But we underscore it by saying that it's not just the business that's making this choice. It's just because everything goes up in the economy over time. And I mean, if people wanted to, if inflation was something that people really wanted to beat down, elect people with, with economic and monetary policy that would strive for strive for 0% inflation, which I don't necessarily know that that's a smart thing to do, but it warrants discussion somewhere outside of this podcast scope, I do have to say. I feel like if we're, you know, talking about the larger economy... And, like, that's our goal here as RS players. We need to fix the entire economy so we don't have to... So there's not a dollar increase on bonds. I think we're... We've... we've we're biting off a little too much. Right, and... and I don't and think see, we can fix that. <laughs> no, and, and I'm just saying in general something. This is, this is from... This is a larger problem than just RS. That, like, and, and that, and that was my everything. point. And that was my point about this. And I, I encourage everybody south of the border... If you have the Mexico? ability, no, no, sorry. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Everybody... Those are pesos. That's a whole Good different thing. What the hell? <laughs> Everybody south of the Canadian border, who is who is American, if you do ever have a chance to come to Canada, take a walk through one of our grocery stores, and you'll just see how and, damn and smell the currency. I mean, if you want to, if you want to, go for it. I, I really don't. If you want to, go for it. Our $5 bill, by the way, has a wonderful picture on it of the International Space Station and the Canada Arm, too. But we made that. No, we made the, the Canada Arm. on your currency? We made the that Canada Arm. was us. Arm. We made the Canada Arm. We made the Canada Arm. But... Um, we, we put the thing in space! Of course you did, and we helped. But it's us! But what I'm saying for... You every... put it on your money? It is! We did that. You're I appropriating know. our culture. Wilfred Laurier is on the front and the ISS That's is on not the back. That's a real person. <laughs> uh, don't, don't, don't get me to Viola Desmond and the Tens. But, but, um, as I was saying, if anybody ever wants to see inflation, come, if you're south of the border, come north, walk through the grocery store and take special note of the dairy and poultry sections. You have a shortage of cows up there, Shane? No, it's just milk is very expensive, as is most dairy things. Did you get another mad cow infection? No, no, there's a there's a scheme uh, that was organized out east called supply management that, uh, that, uh, that sets arbitrary prices on things like milk and all their... Uh, sub products on, on and things what, like what milk and whatnot, and all their sub products. Oh, milk. Yeah, but okay. um, in any case, those sorts of things are very expensive here. But in the meantime, I'm going to take a moment and pay some of the podcast bills by thanking our Patreon supporters this week. This week, I'd like to thank Alvaro L, Amos Reed, Andrew C, Arvid Zell, Chilbura, Daniel W, Dominic R, Drama Free, Duramax, Gila Fleur, Jacob G, Jade Gizmo, Jason S, Jesse W, Kesky, Lemon Lodge, Luminos, Mongrath, Pernasius, Ricky A, Ripeth, Rune Star, Samuel FL, Scott DS, Shirt Pants, Targayeen, The Naked Captain, The Dabbing Goat, Tim, Tom V, Truth Ray, Ukulele Steve, Zant, and Zazacon. Big huge thank you to everybody out there. And if you want to learn more about this, patreon.com slash RSBNB. Sign up for as little as a dollar a month there. Right now, the Patreon folks are voting on our next monthly bit, which is... Um, you know, one of them's running away with it. I'm not going to spoil which one it is, but the choices are Evolving Combat, Who Did It Better? Looking at OSRS Project Rebalance versus EOC, a look at level 110 skills, and a look at temporary game modes like leagues and whatnot and how those would work in RS3. Uh, if you want to vote in that, sign up, patreon.com slash RSBNB, a dollar a month. But with that, you also get upwards of 70 plus 
extra bonus episodes of the podcast, our monthly bits. These are monthly episodes of the show we do discussing one topic. Our most recent one was a discussion on the issues of the sixth age and the narrative uh, directions it took and what issues that presented to gameplay and how it was all resolved in the end and if it could have been if it could have been handled any better uh with that so uh, if, if if that sounds interesting to you that's there as is so many other topics out there like our tier lists uh discussions on eoc legacy combat holiday events practically anything you can think of there's something going to be tangentially related to it at that point but we also do have the vip tier where for three dollars a month You'll receive a rank on our Discord and a chat channel and access to high-quality stereo versions of the show. And if you want to give the ultimate gift, we do have the Insider tier for $5 a month where you'll get access to the clips that we use to make the clip show. And we'll also send you the RSBNB Update Christmas card every December with that. And, of course, a lot of the clips are bangers, and I think we might have a few of them from uh, from pre-show this week. Right, Earth? Yes. So, Patreon.com. Slash RSBNB. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks. All right. Impressed with your use of bangers, there, Shane. Oh yeah, I'm. I'm all. Seems a little too hip for you. I'm all up on my uh, linguistic words that I that I need to use uh, when it comes to it. But um, <laughs> are you? You know, you shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. But. Um, we continue the we continue the the dialogue this week with the raising rituals treasure hunter promotion, and I asked you guys to play this before we began here because I I don't know what it is, and maybe this is a a, a wider discussion on treasure hunter, but I just find their treasure hunter promos a little bit confusing to get into at times compared to compared to other games, you know. Um, methods that they would use for something like this. How did you guys find Raising Rituals today? I clicked it and it gave me things. Yeah, I didn't I didn't like it, like, very much. I just started clicking on the square. I mean, it, it was pretty apparent to me, like, you click on the ones that are visible and it gives you that, and then the other ones I mean, it doesn't tell you what they are, but it has a chance to reveal another modifier. Like oh. that, that's all it was, no? Okay. Yeah, and maybe it's just the other Treasure Hunter promos that I look at and I find some of them more confusing, so I impart that on these, and maybe in hindsight this one wasn't the worst on that front, but um, it has a chance to give, in addition to the usual things, Token of the Lost, which prevents your ritual uh, components from degrading. Also, imp souls in a box, not to be confused with the uh, hunter imps in a box. What these will do is they grant you an extra um, alteration glyph when using them with necromancy. There's also unfinished business scrolls, which with this, um, when you read them, you're required to complete a certain number of rituals. And then after you do that, you will uh, get necromancy experience on them but the thing that that people have been talking about the most are the lost keepsakes which are uh ritual focus items that you can use in the lesser lost things at 25 necromancy and the powerful lost things at 95 necromancy and when you do this you're given uh retrieved lost items of a varying uh, rarity, depending on which ritual that you do. And the thing I think that that the discussion we're back to on this, Tannis, because I know we had, a, we had a big discussion on this when this initially came out, is that the soul die is back on the table here. Yeah. Um, and that was my first question. It was like, okay, I, we've already been down this road. I... It might have been unexpected that they brought it back at this time, but it shouldn't have been unexpected that it was coming back. And we've already, I don't know, I've, I've felt like this has been thoroughly <laughs> plowed ground. Like, uh, yeah. 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 And, you know, looking back to when things like Soul Die and whatnot were available, is that you were actually able, um, 
to get them from the uh, Christmas presents at the Christmas event. So is the issue that Soul Die is back? Well, I, I think it's an issue that the that the question of dies was never handled. If from what I understand, is that what question? Well, the the issue is, and and Stormy Ill- illustrated this when we had him on the podcast to discuss this uh, a, a couple of weeks after Soul Die first came I, out. I, the full disclosure: I don't know anything about dies. I don't know what they are. I don't know why I would use one. I don't. You remember on TF2 how you used to be able to get you know like rare cosmetics and whatnot? Sure. So what you can do with this is that you can use this die on, you know, high level items and it gives it a unique color and, you know, visual effect to them. Okay. And the and, resu- and then and the and the result of this initially was that the dies were initially the original ones like barrows, ice, blood, and whatnot that came sure, from. Sure, I that, got one and that, sold it for that ga- that, a shit ton of money. That came from Clue Scrolls. So now the thing yeah. is, dies well are coming in from Treasure Hunter. So what's that doing to the Clue Scroll market for those sorts of dies? And what does that mean for Clue folks? Is basically the can question. Can you get a soul die from a Clue Scroll? No, you can. No, you no. cannot get soul dies from Clue Scrolls. They, How do you get? Soul dies now. You get them from these treasure hunter promos or the Christmas boxes that were there. So treasure hunter is not giving you an item that you can get. You could only get previously through clue scrolls. These ones were never on clue scroll tables, like the soul die and the Aurora die and whatnot. And in effect, they're discontinued, right? Yeah, because they they only come come in the Christmas items or. Or the uh, initial promotion after necromancy, or this one. Yeah, but I mean, other than this, there is not currently a way to get it. Once this promo is gone, no. Okay. So that's the that's the that's. I I have no horse in this race, right? I don't. And 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 basically, that's the quick summary surrounding this in relation to this, and I mean. I think the surefire way to nip this sort of thing in the bud whenever the dies come up is to just provide an outline of a way that these things could be earned in game. Yeah, like that's what I was going to say. Was it ever said that it was only ever going to be in that promotion with necromancy in the um Christmas stuff? No. Well, they've said that like, they... It'd be, it'd be a huge issue if they were like, this is the only time you're ever going to be able to get right. it, and then, then well, they did this. Like, that's, yeah, that's a huge issue. Well, they have but... said that they're going to do better, and they have a bringing back Treasure Hunter promo-related items at a more okay. regular cadence with that. And, like I said, if there was just a way to earn these, you know, these special dies in-game that wasn't Treasure Hunter, I think you'd nip that one in the bud, and I don't think the and you know folks can correct me if we're wrong on this, but I don't think the issue is that you're going to be getting you know potentially you know some maybe reinforced dragon bones or some slime from this treasure hunter promo. I think it all comes down to that soul die at the end of the day. Well, yeah, it has sure. to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, How has it affected the price? It 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 activated a day ago. So just you know, with how long the G takes to update, we don't know. Uh, okay. We don't know. And 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 see that's the see, it's the problem with discussing all of these economic changes, like right when they happen. Like we can guess, but there's no way of knowing until yeah, it's like, done. Like if we were to just you know look at this in terms of where things were at, if we're to take for granted the ELY.GG prices. Um, prior to this promo, these dies were going for about 700 odd mil. And since then they've dropped, they dropped to about 450, if this is to be believed. And now they're back up to about 650 with this. So it's kind of like in, an, in a an, day. Well, g- give or take. Yeah. Based on the prices that, that were re- registered because What's the volume? And and see, that's the thing. We don't know. 
And I don't like using the ELY.gg website, but it's the only place that shows the individual trades here and has more up-to-date prices it, than RS3. Does it show a volume? I mean, the, the way I'm seeing this here is that there's a collection of prices that are made each and every day on here, as in, you know, there's there's like a handful of them that were sold on the 20th and bought on the 20th and on the 18th, but it's single digits, and I don't know if it's necessarily representative of the entire community out there. So that's why, you know, emphasis on the caveat with that, and it would be nice to have up-to-date GE prices. So, but... I don't know... I don't know if this is ever gonna if this is ever gonna go away until until that's that's handled, and I think the unfortunate part about this is that we just need to weather these times where these microtransaction promos come up because if it was back to back of these, you could definitely imagine that that would have a negative impact on everything community wise in terms of in terms of the goodwill that's been trying to be built since that roadmap last month. Which is what I'm actually so, most concerned about with this. So, can you help me understand something else? I'm guessing that this is like one-time use, and then it's gone forever. It's not like you can put it on an item and then be like, "Oh, let's." That was a bad idea. Let me get it back and resell it. Right? Oh no, of course not. No, yeah, no. So it's one-time use and done. One use and done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah interesting yeah and it, it also makes the item untradeable too well i mean i feel like everything does so but i don't know tanis any closing thoughts on this i think the best thing that they could do is in the future since they missed it this time have another alternative way but the soul die could come in, you know, rather it's super ultra crazy rare drop of some sort of some kind. I don't know. Do you do that with clues? Do you do some kind of necromancy tie in? I, I don't know. But I think if there if there was a weighing game, albeit rare, we would alleviate this these kinds of issues. Do you think even if it was something like Hazelmere's rare would work? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I do. Could, uh, it probably... Because it adds it into game, but we know how stupidly rare the HSR is, right? So. Well, right. And I want to underscore that my biggest thing through this is I don't use dyed equipment. I thought of using it for a bit, maybe, and you know that might be what I you know push for eventually if I decide I don't need any more uh, gear or whatnot. But my biggest thing on this is that this is undoing the goodwill that's been built up in the last month and a bit since the roadmap and whatnot came out. Yeah, because you you saw how Hero Pass took that out of the window, and it was only you know getting things like Osseus and then the dig site. And the roadmap and the the quest before that, hitting those marks, delivering content and showing that things are moving in the right direction, started to build that up. And then you you look at, you know, where's the game been in terms of, you know, monetization and whatnot um, since then. And it really wasn't that uh, overarching until until this week. And I'm wondering, you know, how do you how do you go about that in terms of I mean protecting that goodwill you built it's hard to prove a negative but perhaps don't do that in debating don't prove a negative that's bad <laughs> <laughs> but per perhaps um the fact that there has been content maybe helped minimize what could have been a bigger issue because we know what happens when a controversial treasure hunter promotion comes out in the midst of no content yeah yeah So you're saying we just got to, you can weather these things, but you got to have it, you know, 
in line with with content that's decent, like the mm-hmm. big site and whatnot. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. That works for me. Well, speaking of um, direction of the game and where things are going, um, there was a note that was put out uh, last weekend on X that they are looking for a new executive producer for RuneScape. And, of course, that means RS3. So what that means, folks, is that we just met Mod Marcos last month. And it was clear that he was working on both OS and RS3. And I don't think it's you can ask somebody to work on both games like that in the EP role um, for an extended period of time. So it makes sense that they're looking for somebody else here after uh, you, they brought in Marcos here. Um, any, any thoughts, Tannis, on, on opening this up here to a new EP? Off the um, bat. Well, I mean, it, it, to me, it makes sense. I I knew we would have one eventually. I I like I because I Marcos really did feel like a caretaker kind of person. Yeah, I didn't figure he would be in. Um, he wasn't going to be doing both games unless they made him like I don't know czar of runes of all RuneScape and then brought in you know people to head up the individual games. I, I, so I, I was expecting. Um, expecting them to to probably hire someone but i also kind of like to think that he walked in and then was like oh man and then ran right back to <laughs> the sense that i got the sense that i got from his from the live stream and the stage that he was in was that he was very genuine and that the, what he was saying was the right things to the rs community at that time so I do wonder what it's going to be like bringing somebody else in. They say on their job posting that the executive producer for RS3 at Jagex, that person will be the vision holder, the budget holder, and the production leader of an MMO. And as we have talked about before when we had Maud Warden on the podcast, when he was EP, what he said is that it was the overarching vision and strategy as well as the game and developing the team behind it, as well as advancing the relationship with the players and the commercial plans for the game. And that's what an executive producer can be summed up as with this. Um, Earth, do you have any uh, questions or any thoughts here on this, uh, this development of leading towards a new executive producer from where we've been? I don't know if you if you watched that live stream that Marcos was on. Did you? I I did not, and I don't really know anything about him. But okay. yeah, I mean, you can't do that for two huge games at the same time. <laughs> no, no, you definitely can't. Um, and with that, I think what we wanted to do is have a look at the previous executive producers. So at this point, that's Marcos, Mod Keeper, and Mod Warden, and. Summarizing up, I think what Mod Marcos did was that the time he was there working on both RS3 and Old School, which we assume he's still doing and is going to be carrying that forward until the new person arrives. I think he was also very responsible for the early 2024 shift that we saw with the roadmap and subsequent comms around it back towards community input of the game, bringing over some of those things that they were doing on Old School to work the community input in as well as increasing the regularity of the community interaction. Um, I think another thing he'll be, uh, he is known for is structuring the roadmap, putting out a plan that brings that meaningful content forward and enabling the devs and the, and, and the other producers and the other leaders on the team to put that collection of content out. Because we saw that with this roadmap, is that it's been a long time since we had had something so varied that had PVM, it had a temporary game mode, it had quests, it had skilling in it. So many things in there. And I'd say that the overarching vision that we saw and see, continuing with Marcos, is the plan to build a long-term uh, idea for the way the game is going and, and communicating the players and communicating that to the players. And I, and I know that because he actually said that on, uh, on, on the discord stage that he was on. Then if we pivot over to mod keeper, I think 
I think Maude Kiefer's tenure can be best described as steady as she goes. I think that's probably how we would put that. And I think what he said as well was that he had to focus on letting the team be the team. Um, and and we know, of course, uh, I, I don't... And see, this is the issue. It's not really... I, I feel like there was a, a huge push in the community when it was announced that he left to pin the changes on the direction and everything that happened with Hero Pass directly on him. Tannis, where do you go with that? So I guess if I had to, like, you know, if I if I was summing him up, uh, here, let's put it in nautical terms, right? The Brits, the Brits like uh, the ocean, right? So, um, Marcos is kind of like the hospital ship, right? We he he was taking care of triage, it's stopping the bleeding, and was exactly what was needed at, at that time, um, because people knew something was going on, and he had a really good um, way of just communicating, um, and that you know, and that. Uh, interview or whatever um it was they did because i actually think the discord thing was even more detailed you know than what we got um, yeah before yeah absolutely so, and then you go to mod keeper my keeper is like he's a cruise ship captain the only problem is his cruise ship caught covid and so they had to set out at sea for like like just sitting there indefinitely hey is that a cough i don't know yeah we can't for it like just here we are. <laughs> we're, we're, we're on a boat. <laughs> I think he. <laughs> I think. I think the thing with Mod Keeper that a lot of people don't realize is that he was initially hired as a technical executive producer of all things. Yeah, and I mean, I can see that. Help us understand what that means exactly. Well, basically, behind he he would be would have been behind the operations of the things that the game runs on, like the servers, the cloud infrastructure, and whatnot. Got it. So kind of what I do. Yeah, and what he did as well is that uh, a lot of these didn't see the light of day, but there were also a lot of changes in his tenure on RS3 that modernized a lot of technical things about the game, which is precisely in his wheelhouse when you think about it, right? Like if, you, mean, like, if you tee sure. up something like the login lockout, that leads to a whole suite of changes, and that's something that somebody like Mod Keeper would excel at when he was on the technical side of it, and then you apply that to the engine of RS3 when he becomes EP there, and you start to kind of see about how, you know, a lot of the background stuff happened with the Jagex accounts and um, how the game grew up in, 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 in that regard, and maybe... There just wasn't enough of a foresight and a push to illustrate a content-based vision towards the players. And I was going to say, I mean, maybe the captain was too busy tinkering in the engineering room. Uh, right, know, I mean, and and I don't want that to take away from 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 the person himself, because what I have heard from various folks is that he was a wonderful person down to heart. Well, yeah, we're not talking about. I, I know, and and the reason I'm I sure say, he's a right, because 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 I, mean, you know, I looked on the Reddit when when he when it was announced that he was no longer there, and some of the comments were not the the smartest oh. about him. Yeah, no, we're we're just talking their leadership style. Yeah, and, you know, and when you know, and to kind of finish it up, Mod Mod Warden was that trailblazer right he's and he was Bert. the pandemic he's, he's, executive he's, producer yeah <laughs> well yeah um yeah i guess you can't plan that but he took big chances i think big risk um mobile steam mm -hmm. growing the game trying to capture new markets and i think the biggest thing is that the game needed at the time was bringing in expertise from the wider games industry like we saw people yeah. who were previously on AAA titles joining the joining joining the company, and and, and he and he even worked at Epic himself. 
So. Right, and I'm kind of curious about that going forward because there's you know, they've done better with that, and so I wonder, you know, it, will the next EP come from the larger industry, right? Or will it be or will it be internal? or maybe someone internal, right? Mm-hmm. And and I think the interesting thing about all this when you when you look at it is that maybe maybe the the personnel stuff can be fixed by just a, a change in the way you know that you know that HR and whatnot will 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 scout the people and then that doesn't necessarily need to fall on the EP of drawing people in to work unless the you know the EP wants someone in particular on this and the bigger question with this is that you know what does RS3 need in an executive producer right now and to me the thing that stands out after the roadmap and the content that we've seen is we need some form of stability and a way to know that when this new EP comes in a year from now we're not going to be changing direction from just what was outlined you know last month well that's what I, I want to see someone that can as far as I'm concerned the plan's fine you need someone to come in and execute it yeah like you know just but if we're going to be changing <laughs> but if we're going to be changing direction again in a year to 18 months uh, from where we're at you got to go through this entire process of onboarding the person to make sure that you know they don't that they don't repeat repeat mistakes of the past yeah, and i think true. and i think that was one of the great things about bringing in marcos from old school is that he knows this community inside and out. And that showed, right? It like did. I think that that was the missing That was the know, missing that, piece. That was missing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and my biggest concern is, well, you know, you hire a new EP, let's say you know, they hire somebody in July or August, given, you know, we're almost at the tail end of June. This person, you know, will get hired and probably start in, you know, October, November at that rate, right? And then they'll spend a few months getting acclimated to the situation, and we might hear from them in, you know, February or March, give or take, I think, if, if you know, past trends were to follow on that. And then the question would be, well, new EP, are you going to, in effect, keep the trend that was established last year of consulting more with the community and, you know, um, ensuring that the game delivers those monthly content beats because what that's, if you could have, that's the biggest thing. What if you could have both? Hashtag draft Osborne. Uh, Bring him back. He's been out in the world, been learning things, doing things. I'm he went sure. to Square Enix. Wait, Final Fan, you are bringing him back. <laughs> but. But see, that's the thing. Him an offer he can't refuse. But the thing is, I I I know that people who have left Jagex at that leadership level and in general companies will not go back unless it's <laughs> well. <laughs> that says something in of itself. No, too, it just in but... general, large companies. If somebody at the management level Any leaves, company. they're not going to go back. But you're going back for a to run it you're not going back to be what you were you're going back to be the boss i i don't think that i don't think that i don't think that would fly let's be bad because he he knew the community he knew the game right and you know maybe it falls down to the folks doing the hiring at jagex to ensure that the new person who comes in does have the ability to interact with the game in a community first angle, because yeah. that's the way RS3 has gone since uh, since since the dreaded Hero Pass debacle, right? Well, I mean, yes, but it's also the way that like every freaking company does it now, right? I mean, because you have a couple loud jackasses out there. Every everyone thinks that we're supposed to know what every head of every company does now. Yay. Welcome 24. I, I I don't follow where you're going with this. 
I mean, there was a time when you never knew what an executive producer was, oh, let alone what they were doing, oh, okay. let alone anything. But right. because there's been a couple very high profile people like that that just are constantly in the news, right. people kind of expect and that. Be, now. Because, because before Warden, we really didn't know who EP was or what they did. Not really. I mean, I can remember, you know, I remember the name MMG. I don't remember well, he was the CEO anything of about him. He was the CEO. Right. You know what his biggest yeah. you know what his biggest claim to fame was? What was that? Bonds. That was under him? Yeah. And you know how he rolled it out? Really? You know how he rolled it out? Yeah, I mean I was here. He called a he, you probably don't know this story, but he called in a selection of high level players, influential players of the day to brief them on the situation and get their feedback directly on it and make any changes that would be needed before rolling it out. Um, wow. If people want to hear more about this story, go listen to the old school RS update episode where we talked to, about uh, this in the past with Raji. We had him on a few weeks ago and he shared that story. Well, I'll be damned. We'll be some RuneScape history there. Yeah, it's amazing what you can... what what you can unearth with all these discussions on that, but um, all, all sorts of fun things about that. But um, I, I've illustrated what my biggest need is for the executive producer, I think, just the continuity to ensure that we're not able to repeat mistakes of the past where we fall down into these droughts of not having content for months on end and continually changing directions because we seem to have a direction now that makes sense. And the question is, well, under a new EP, would that change? Because I know they said they're doing the 2025 survey to gauge where they go. Would this new EP, when they get hired, change that, I guess, is the question. So. so yeah, I hope not. Yeah. I didn't even want to entertain that. Right. Idea. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, we'll always have old school. That's what they say, right? <laughs> Yay. All right. Let's talk about some patch notes then this week. Only only a few of them. Um, a couple of buffs, actually, in relation to the skilling offhands from last week. So first up with uh, Skika's Hypno Wand. Uh, the Hunter's Will duration has been increased to 19.8 seconds from 10.2. This is the active that causes creatures to be attracted to box traps. And they also increase the chance to trigger Hunter's Will uh, to 5% up from 2%. So a big change there on that in terms of the percentages and time duration. And as for the Archaeology Sash Brush, uh, the Chrono Focus duration has been increased to 30 seconds from 15. That's the whack-a-mole uh, thing for following time sprites. And they've also lowered the requirements to screen Volcanic Ash to 73 Archaeology to match the lowest level spot that Volcanic Ash can be obtained from on the excavation spot. An issue has also been fixed with that was causing death swiftness and all of its cosmetic overrides to appear incorrectly. The Party Hat Overhead Emote has been renamed to Green Party Hat and customizing Overhead Emotes that have multiple variants will now state the current active variant in the customization screen. And of course, what this is talking about is the ability now um, following the pride event to just stack up all the um, cosmetic overrides that are similar and just, uh, just change their uh, color based on whichever one uh, that you're wanting, that you're wanting to use with that. So I, I think, I think that's a, that's a pr pretty good change. And if you click customize, you can change it to uh, whichever one be, uh, your favorite. So. They fixed the um, scorpion thing, didn't they? Yeah, they did. They fixed that last uh. week. <laughs> the gigantic pets. I, I know I enjoyed walking around uh. with, with, with brains. Oh. Fun Being police. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, for everybody uh, who is suffering from Philippi, uh, Carnelian PTSD. Um, you can now consist. Uh, you can now consistently teleport to Philippi uh, and Carnelian with the relevant clue scroll and globe trap. Philippe. Jack. Oh, is that how you say that? Philippi. 
Felipe? Shane. <laughs> or Phil. Okay, it's it's Philippe, not F- Philippe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Philippe. <laughs> I don't know. I I always said, I always said Philippe or Philippe. Oh, nothing is funnier than a friend pronouncing something slightly wrong. (laughs) Which I tend to do time to time. Yes, you do. Daily. Players who have Pernix armor pieces keepsaked will now have their retro counterparts unlocked as the overrides appear in the wardrobe as expected. Uh, so just a few patch notes there on that, but uh, not too much to write home about. Definitely, uh, I think the changes to the offhands are welcome changes there. But we have some uh, unfortunate news about RuneFest now. Uh, RuneFest has been postponed at the very least, and it, and it might uh, not be happening entirely. Um, as people might know, they were partnering with Insomnia this year, and it was going to be hosted uh, in Birmingham at the uh, NEC. And the people who uh, run Insomnia have effectively had to fold up their company, and everybody on the event side was laid off. So that did not bode well for RuneFest. So Jagex has said that they are currently exploring options with the NEC to reschedule RuneFest to early 2025. They will make ticket refunds available to those who can no longer attend. And with that, uh, they say that there will be an update when they're able to actually uh, provide a concrete date on that. And I think that's the... Uh, most important thing to take away from this. I know I saw lots of gut reactions that RuneFest is canceled, but the hope is, and I know the Cancel people... Culture strikes again. <laughs> the hope is, and people at Jagex, especially ModMark, were doing whatever they could to try and find a way to make it happen. So for people who have been wanting to go to that, fingers crossed that you will have your chance in early 2025 as a standalone event at the NEC in Birmingham, UK. But um, we, we we were wondering what was going to be happening with this because we'd been following the insomnia news. And, you know, from our perspective, none of this looked good. And we were uh, kind of thinking that, you know, the writing was probably on the wall for this. So thankfully, you know, they put out an update on this and they're not going with the complete canceled off the bat. They're just saying postponed at this point in time. And uh, if you, if you bought tickets with that, uh, you'll receive email updates whenever uh, it's time to move forward on that. But. Hey, America is open for business. Indianapolis has a great, uh, you know, place for events. Who um, would want to go uh, there? Yes, Indianapolis is the first <laughs> place I think of. when I think, hmm, where do place. I want to go? In the the airport. <laughs> Are they going to have gonna... an event where people are coming from all over the world? Are they going to pair it with the Indy 500? Really located. Like ah, they the what, what if they paired it with <laughs> right the... after Columbus, Ohio? Like... Oh, I know. oh, come on. We're better Columbus, Ohio. Come on. Come I know on. lots of folks who'd like to have it in Columbus. Um, uh, you could pair it with the Indy 500 there, Tennis. Yeah, yeah, there we go. I still think the two best places to do it in the U.S. would either be somewhere like Miami or Vegas. Oh, not Miami. I'll do Miami? I would do, I would do Vegas. Yeah, Florida. No. no I all, thought you meant no. the one in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Why in the hell would you pick Miami? Yeah, they're not, British I and mean, they'll die. It's not as big as New yeah. York. <laughs> they will die. <laughs> That's not very nice. I want to hear this. Hosted like, in January. It's not why as big because it's not as big as New York. It's not as expensive as New York, and it's still equally as easy to get to being on the Eastern Seaboard. You know what's cheap and easy to get to? Indianapolis. Well, <laughs> Centrally located. <laughs> I know Vegas is also cheap to get to. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, at least have it well, in Vegas where it's like, yeah. you know, fun and not too much fun. Too much fun. I, mean, I guess there's different types of crime there, but like a bunch. Of, uh, mm, mm. Can you imagine all of the all the RS players on the streets of Miami? No, no, we would. We don't fit in. Those. I've seen videos. I would not but, fit in. Okay, no. <laughs> well, what are the options then? Miami, Atlanta, New York, Literally Chicago. Anywhere Ooh, not Atlanta either. I wouldn't do that. I think you could do Atlanta. Cause really? Because there's a big, um, what is it, Dragon Con that's Yeah, there? that's the one. Like, there's a big community for it there. But that's the... Atlanta's the only place in the South I'd go to. And I wouldn't do New York or Chicago. Well... There may be Charlotte. Howard. Wouldn't be too bad. But, yeah, I mean, this, and, and oh, yeah. this is what we always say. Like, I know it would be difficult for Jagex, but I think it would be an entirely different event if they hosted it in the U.S. Yeah, it would be bigger. And they'd, they'd make even more money. So, a hell of a lot of tickets here. You could sell out a stadium. <laughs> I, I have always been surprised that they've never done it in the U.S. Oh, just think if they did it in Vegas now, they could put it in the big dome uh, uh, spherical thing. They could have a show big there. Big dome spherical yeah. thing. What What is that? It's you know, like the, a... The big beer. dome spherical <laughs> thing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I forget what its name is, but you can see it flying into Vegas. And, you know, at one point they put an emoji on it and whatnot. Um, but th they change it, and it's this big, big, you know, Let's do that with their desks at school, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I'm just gonna, I got, I just gotta get the, the name of this thing in Vegas, then we'll move on to, uh, what we've been doing. Um, I'm, I'm still stuck like in Miami, the man. Sphere. Like, I'm sorry, what? It's just called The Sphere at Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. No, no, I I know what you were talking about. You just oh, okay. the way you described it was <laughs> okay. Big dome spherical thing. It's spherical. Uh, okay. What have, what have we been up to? Let's start with you, Tannis. Uh, continuation of last week. Really, just still working. Any pieces? Um, no pieces, but um. I'm cruising along with for collections and was half tempted to just keep doing archaeology. It's like, ooh, will this be my third 200 or my second 200 mil, third 200 mil? Maybe. Maybe. Wait and see. Somebody, somebody in Clan Quest went 20,000 uh, porter charges and only got one brush piece. Oh, oh I've been... Oh, let's see how many times have I filled that up. Um, I probably filled it up half that, so... Well, it should be coming soon then, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool then. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, rarer than we thought they were going to be at this point in time, so... Okay. Um, as for me this week, I went back to Vorkath, actually. And did a handful of kills there. And I, like I um it it went. I I was killing it on normal mode fairly, you know, consistently, but that boss is the is the definition of chaos. <laughs> like if because mm -hmm. it becomes chaotic because if you don't kill it fast enough, it spawns the globs of poison on the ground. Well you're and, not doing any like nitty um, you're not doing any of the pool things. The pool things? No, I'm not. You know, I, to... I, no, and 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 see, that's the most annoying thing to me about that boss is that if you want to mitigate either the spikes or the minions, you have to go disrupt the two um plinth things, right? Mm -hmm. And to me, that's just wasted time, and I'd rather not. I've killed it successfully with both the spikes and the minions, so that, that that's fine. I'll just I'll just deal with them, right? Um, spikes you just got to watch out for on the ground. It's the same sort of visual effect that that the um, 
um, Hydrix Dragon special attack gives, and the the minions can be taken out either either with the Ballista or the um, or Threads of Fate and 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 one of your necromancy abilities. So it's not it's not too big of a deal uh, on that front. But I'm I, th- I think I'm just going to slowly trip chip away at that whenever I do PVM because I still want to get the hundred. Uh, kills to get the upgraded Nexus because that provides you an extra 15 levels on uh, Greater Bone Shield which given how much they've been talking about accuracy and how these bosses um, in the Sanctum of Rebirth are gonna um, uh, land I, I, I want to have that before that before that launches later this summer so that's what I've been working on on the side um, aside from uh, the, the, the Holy Trinity of uh, yak milk, dinosaur roars, and potion flasks. Yak what? Yak milk. Oh, milk. Yeah, yeah. And I also and I also went on a run on old school. Um, got a bunch of quest requirements, but you'll hear more about that on the old school uh, show later this week. How about you, Earth? Um, I have been playing a lot of old school, getting ready for uh. Ball Gothic Sleep, not. I've done a little bit on RS3, but not not a whole lot. Um, you think you'll make it in time for the requirements of uh, Ball Gothic Sleeps? I don't know, man. What? I mean, the... I've got. What would you say the biggest thing holding you back is? Because I know what mine I was. I mean, I got a lot of hunter levels to go, and I need uh, four more slayer levels, I think. Can I boost that? There's no slayer requirement on the quest. There is for the Path of Gluffery. Ah, right. 56, not boostable. Four more levels. I just, just entire seconds ago got 85 combat, so I can do Dream Mentor now. I'm in Defender of Varrock. I still need four smithing levels. That's easy, but I need 14 hunter levels. Ooh. But then... I know I was yelling at you about... I gotta get another 10 hunter levels. I know I was yelling at you about birdhouses, but that probably won't, there probably won't be time for that between now and then. That's what I kept telling you, and you wouldn't listen. Um, Herblore's easy. I just got 65 farming earlier tonight. Three agility levels, I just got to sit and do. Uh, two magic levels, easy. Seven more thieving levels. That one's going to be hard. Do we know if any of these will be boostable? No idea. No idea. Then... I'm thinking some of these. I mean, I can get... All of these, but the hunter and thieving, no problem. The thieving will be the mo- won't be too bad once you get to sixty, uh, especially with the new Varlamar stuff. I'm at sixty five, and it's oh, terrible. Oh, that that only took me a few hours to do. I don't at Varlamar, yeah, you just gotta you just kind of gotta lean into it, get comfy in your chair, and away you go. I mean, I was doing that most of the show. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I guess I got 50k XP, but you yeah, know, that's 10 so, more hours at that rate. So for, for people unaware, the way this works is that, um, you know, in RS3, <laughs> you click on something and you will continually thieve it, right? Not the case on old school. It's very traditional in that regard. So Varlamore thieving um, lets you pickpocket wealthy citizens for house keys, and occasionally a young child will come and distract that citizen allowing you to get that lean back uh, thieving that we like from RS3. And then you use the keys and go open houses and uh, burgle uh, their valuables. Uh, that's it's kind yeah, of this like is a safe brand tracking. new island that they just released, by the way. And the first thing we all do is go steal shit from the rich people. <laughs> like, it's pretty based. <laughs> that, that, that is it, right? Yeah. Yeah. You should also do pretty pa- base. You should also do perilous moons when you can. The quest that gives you a nice infusion of Slayer XP. Mm, I think I just got the requirements for that, actually. Yeah, let me know when you do that. Um, just be patient with it, though. It's combat related. Uh oh, 
Yeah. That's never a good sign when you tell me to be patient. I'm the most patient person I know. <laughs> uh, well, for what it's worth, it only took me three tries to kill one of the bosses. So I thought you'd never died on a quest, Jane. I I have on this one. Multiple oh, okay. times, yeah. <laughs> but... Anyways, for those of us, for those listeners who haven't uh, been around as long as I have, Shane used to say he'd never died in a quest ever. And then Summer's End came out, and he died to the um, was that the court beast or is that the what's it called? I have no spiritual idea. Beast. I, I he think died it was the spiritual that, beast. But, yeah, but continued to claim that that didn't count because it was in the spirit realm. You remember and, that like yesterday. Yes, because I called you out on it. Uh, you should have a name tag on the show, calling Shade out since whatever year. I mean, that's why you bring me on here. Yeah, to keep, notes. to keep me honest and watch out for my pronunciations. I see our Discord channel has now the dis- discussion of uh, Philippe. Yeah. Hey, at least I finally... Uh bullied you into saying drama freeze name right oh he's wonderful i've talked to him he wouldn't mind if it was the other way anyways all right i i want i want i want feedback on that all right moving on to achievements mind would be start, personally offended starting off alio sith got 120 archaeology on june 19th quest or shit got 120 mm. prayer on the 18th of june Bellicosity got 99 cooking on the 17th. Then on the 16th, we have Aliosith with 120 invention and G with 120 mining. Then on the 15th, we have Lord Zorik with 99 divination. Therion, uh on June 14th, finally got it together and got 99 necromancy. Um, Dane Karai got 99 fletching, wood cunning, and mining on the 14th. E Dict got 99 herb lore on June 14th, and Lady Claw got 120 attack and strength on June 14th. Right on. And then moving on to the 13th, uh, Godin got 120 necromancy. Um, C got 120 fishing. Um, on the 12th, uh, Edict of Chaos got 120 fishing. Um, Edict got 99 Necromancy, um, and Jade Core got 120 Mining. Nice job. Nicely done, everyone. Nicely done. All right, Earth, pick of the week time. What do you got for us? So I have, um, a game called Abiotic Factor. Um, this is one that I've played cooperatively with Shane and a few other uh, friends. Colleagues. Um, Colleagues, yes. Um, And it's uh, it's a survival game, but it's based very heavily off of the first Half-Life, which, if you've never played, is excellent. Um, And it's got that same sense of just campy science humor. It's in early access, but it is extremely well done. Um, Very well balanced. Um, Receiving constant updates has surprisingly deep lore. I've I've been really, really impressed by it. I thought it was going to be something as like, okay, this is fine. We'll play it a few times, then it'll go away. But I'm excited. I'm extremely excited for the expansion that's coming out later this summer. Yeah, for when they is is that going to finish the game or is that uh, just uh, no. the next one? Okay, okay. Um, like I think the best way of describing it would be uh, Half Life meets Left for Dead or Seven Days. To I, I, I think. Oh God, I can't remember if it's Seven Days or it's not Left for Dead. I would not use that comparison. Okay, seven um, days then probably. Is is seven days? It's a like building survival game. I yeah. feel like that yeah. seven days someone's made that comparison and I can't remember. Yeah. And 
you know, I, I, I also think with this is that um, if that's if that's your genre, uh, you'll enjoy this, and you can you know go as it's as not surface. my genre, and I have enjoyed it. Yeah. So. But also, I was going to say, in addition to that, um, it's I think the cooperative aspect that does it too from that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But and it's actually a good value too in terms of in terms of the money you 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 put into it because uh, I don't know how much it costs in the U.S. but you know regular not on sale thirty two fifty Canadian. I don't know how much you guys paid for it. I I don't pay attention. Oh okay, fair enough, fair enough. If it's less than like a triple A sixty dollar game, it's Monopoly money. Doesn't nice. matter. Okay. Um but we'll we'll throw a link to this in Steam and you know you can also do all sorts of fun things and I think we knew we completed what we had there um when you guys started building golf cart r- ramps and jumps in the in the lobby. It's fun as shit. <laughs> but that's pick of the week and I think pretty much uh brings us uh, near the end of this episode. Um of update, Tennis, you have anything else before we go? Well, that's it for me. No, yeah, same. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, we we did the discussion justice for your, you, our listeners, on the bonds and the uh, microtransaction treasure hunter stuff. Let us know what you guys think, of course, in the comments. Always, we do appreciate that. Um, in Discord as well, update dot show slash Discord. Uh, if you want to subscribe to the podcast, the best way to do that is. Um, by going to update.show slash subscribe and we're on all the major podcast listening services out there Apple, Spotify, Google, Pocket Cast, and more and YouTube as well at youtube.com slash RSBNB but we'll see you guys next week for another episode of Update The Beach I think is is, is what's on tap if I if my schedule uh, looks correct from what I looked at oh, uh, shit. the game calendar this week that. yeah yeah you gonna jump in the hole get some work on that 120 dungeoneering and i need you to stop saying things like that please but there's a but there's a hole that you go in and you get dungeoneering xp and you jump into no it. i'm 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 aware of the hole i just need you to stop saying it oh, tannis do you agree oh yeah i'm gonna work that hole out well with that that's what <laughs> we'll be doing next week on update we'll, we'll see you guys next week for another episode of rsvb update see you then everyone take care Goodbye forever. See ya.